the term half-life is synonymous with radioactive materials, though it is also used in pharmacology. It is defined as the time taken for an initial amount of a substance to be reduced by half. Now in the case of radioactive substances, it refers to a transmutation, that is a changing from one element into another element. And in the case of pharmacology, it refers to the metabolism of a drug. In both cases, the determination of the half-life of a substance is irrespective of the initial starting amount. Now I'm going to be using radioactive substances as my example. Now a radioactive substance with a certain half-life is made up of radioactive nuclei. Now when a radioactive nucleus transmutes, it is random and spontaneous. What it basically means is we can't predict when the nucleus will decay and when it happens, it's practically instantaneous. But on average, if we look at the total sample, which is obviously made up of many nuclei, after a certain time, the half-life, half of the number of nuclei have transmuted into another substance. Let me draw a circle. And that circle represents the total amount of carbon-14 I might have. Now carbon-14 is a radioactive form of carbon and it has a half-life of approximately 5,730 years. And it decays into nitrogen-14. And so if I my initial amount at time equals zero is the full amount, then after 5,730 years, half of it has decayed into nitrogen-14, leaving half of carbon-14 left over. After another 5,730 years, another half-life, half of what I have left over is now nitrogen-14. Another half-life means a half of that again, and another half-life, half again. So in this case, what I have is one, two, three, four half-lives, and by this stage, I have only one eighth of my initial amount being carbon-14, and the remainder is nitrogen-14. What if I were to graph this with respect to time? If I place time on my x-axis, and the amount that I have left over on the y-axis, with this value here being our n naught, my initial amount, what we end up getting is a graph that looks like this. It's a negative exponential graph. If I were to make this equal half of my substance I've left over, then what over over here would be represented by my half-life, the time for half of it to decay. And similarly speaking, again, the time here is another half-life that has taken place after half of that has decayed. Now this graph can be simplified by replacing the n and n naught, and to say we started with 100%, we have 50% over here, and so forth. Now the slope of this line represents the rate of decay, and so as a result, there is a greater rate of decay, and therefore the substance is more radioactive earlier on in its decay process. Now this graph can also be represented mathematically. And so the mathematical formula for this relationship is n, where n of course is the amount left over, multiplied by n naught, our original amount, multiplied by e to the power of negative lambda t. t being the time you want to do the measurement. But what is lambda? Lambda is referred to as the decay constant. And its value can be determined as lambda is equal to the natural log of two over the half-life. So what does the decay constant actually represent? Well, it is a measure of how quickly a substance decays. Now it goes to show that if something has a high decay constant, it means it's decaying quickly, which means its half-life is shorter. And that's confirmed by a mathematical relationship here, because there is an inverse relationship between the half-life and the decay constant. I hope that has consolidated your understanding of the half-life. Please check out my longer video where I analyze the half-life of B. Please consider supporting me by buying my coffee. My name is Paul from Physics High. Take care and bye for now.